In this tutorial series, I will be explaining how to create tool assisted speedruns of Super Mario 64 using the Moopin64 emulator and other useful software. This series will start from the very basics and is intended for people who are completely new to the scene and want to learn how to make their own tasks. If you don't fully understand what a tool assisted speedrun is and want to know more about them before you dive in and make your own, I would recommend checking out Sonic Packer's video on the subject, which I'll link in the description below. In this first part, I will be explaining how to set up Moopin64 itself. Before you start, you will first need to download the emulator from the link in the description and acquire the Super Mario 64 ROM, preferably the US version as that's the version used for pretty much all purposes, including in ROM hacks and the task competition. Of course, I cannot tell you how to acquire the ROM, but what I can tell you is that the ROM file should have a Z64, N64 or V64 file extension and definitely not an EXE extension. Anyway, without further ado, here's how to set up Moopin. So once you have Moopin64 downloaded and have got hold of a ROM, the next thing you want to do is extract it from the RAR folder. After that, open the folder. You'll see three different executable files. These are three different versions of Moopin64, each with slightly different features. The first is the standard version of Moopin64, the second has an additional feature that can record console resets in a task, and the final version splits videos it records when they exceed 2GB, for reasons that will be explained in a future tutorial. For now, don't worry about any of that, just open the first version. Once it loads, go to Options and Settings. Here we can configure Moopin's various plugins. These control various parts of the emulation, and if they're not already, you should set these plugins to be the same as mine using the drop down menus. Go to the Video Plugin section and click the Config button. Here you can change various visual settings such as the window resolution, texture enhancement, and anti aliasing. Using a different video plugin will give you different options and different results, and I'd encourage you to play around with them. However, I personally prefer Jabbo's Direct 3D8 for recording tasks, as some other plugins add a frame of input delay, and sometimes they have issues with certain ROM hacks. Once you're happy with the settings, press the OK button. Next, click the Config button in the Input Plugin section. This will bring up a menu which will allow you to set the key bindings. To do this, click the button corresponding to the controller button you want to configure, then press whichever key you want to use for that button. You can also set the inputs which correspond to the joystick being pushed forwards, backwards, left and right. Unlike with the video settings, I do not recommend changing the input plugin, as the TAS input plugin is the only available option which is designed for tassing. Once you're happy with the key bindings, press OK and go to the hotkey section of the settings menu. This section works similarly to the input plugin configuration section, only it allows you to bind keys for various emulator controls. The fast forward button removes the emulator's speed cap and allows it to run at an unlimited speed. Speed up and slow down change the emulator's running speed. Frame advance advances the game by one frame every time you press it. Pause slash resume allows you to pause and unpause the emulator and take screenshots saves what's currently being displayed to an image file. The other options in the top half are just keyboard shortcuts for various features you'll encounter later, so don't worry about them too much. The bottom half allows you to configure the keys used to save and load save states. These allow you to save the game state and revert it back at any point and are an important part of tasking. Once you're happy with all the settings, click OK and load your ROM by going to File, Load ROM. The game should now start playing and the task input window will open on the top left of your screen. This window allows you to control which buttons are pressed at any given time using the mouse, as well as allowing precise control of the joystick. Left clicking a given checkbox will toggle its corresponding button, while right clicking it will cause it to toggle between on and off every other frame. Left clicking or dragging the mouse anywhere in the joystick square will move the joystick to that point, and right clicking will cause the joystick to follow the mouse until you click once again. You can also manually set the joystick coordinates by changing the numbers in the top right section, and can add or subtract one from each coordinate using the buttons just to the right. Finally, adjusting the sliders on the right hand side will change how much the joystick will tilt in the corresponding axis when you move it using the keys you bound earlier. At this point, everything is set up to allow you to task Super Mario 64, as well as to play it casually. In part 2, I'll explain how to create a task as well as how to encode it as a video. Before you watch part 2, I'd recommend familiarising yourself with Moopin's features, especially save states and frame advance, as they will be very important for tasking. If you get stuck or something doesn't work as it's supposed to, I'd recommend asking for help in either the general tasks slash ABC Discord server or the task competition server. Hopefully someone, if not myself, will know the solution to your problem. Invite links to both of those servers will be included in the description below. Alternatively, you could ask in the comments, though the Discord servers would be a better option since there are more people able to help there. Finally, thanks for watching and I'll see you in part two. Ooh,